So the time has come that we can now start talking some real chemistry. And uh, the first question we need to answer is, what is a chemical? Because everybody talks about being really scared of chemicals. But the truth is, everything around us is a chemical that is matter because it's made of atoms. Um, And when we look at atoms, we just learned about how to build them. We talked about the periodic table. So the periodic table of elements has 118 squares, but only 90 of them naturally occur on Earth. So if that's the case, then there should only be like, you know, 90 substances on Earth or whatever, because there are only 90 naturally occurring elements um, or atoms. But the truth of the matter is that it's much more complex than that. So the first thing that we need to know about is that there are 90 naturally occurring atoms, which give us elements. And elements are substances that are made of just one atom. So if you have a tank of helium to blow up balloons, there's only helium atoms in that tank because um, helium is an element. It's on the periodic table of element. But it's millions of those. So sodium is an element. And if you had a chunk of sodium, then you would have a bunch of Na atoms, a bunch of sodium atoms. Um, Potassium is also an element. So if we were to look at potassium under an extremely strong microscope, we would just see a bunch of potassium atoms, which you can represent as circles with uh, Ks in the middle of them. And it would be all potassium atoms. So elements are made of all of the same atom. And that's kind of why we call them elements, because there's you can't make it any more simple than that. It's kind of like letters of the alphabet. There's nothing really more simple than letters of the alphabet. So now, how do we get millions of substances out of these 90 elements? And the key is that the atoms stick together, just like letters in the alphabet stick together to give us all of the different words that we have. So we have 26 letters in the alphabet and we get millions of words. We have 90 naturally occurring elements and we get millions of substances. Same kind of idea. So let's look at H. H stands for hydrogen. Hydrogen is an element. It's on the periodic table of elements. And if you have a bunch of hydrogen atoms, you have elemental hydrogen. O is oxygen. It's on the periodic table as well. And if you have a bunch of oxygen atoms, then you have the element of oxygen. A bunch of the same atoms, right? There's our fun friend oxygen. That's how we know their elements. They're on the periodic table. And they also have an atomic symbol, which is on the periodic table. They only have one thing in them, um, and that makes them elements. Now, if we take two hydrogens and we stick them to one oxygen, we get water. And we write that H2O. I'm going to show you what that means in just a second. Um, So we can stick H's and O's together and get a whole new substance of water. A molecule is what we get when atoms bond to each other in specific ratios to form a particle. So we just looked at that H2O. And that H2O tells us that we're going to have two H's and one O. We could also have a situation where we could get H2O2, which is a totally different thing, where we get two hydrogens and one oxygen. A different molecule in one atom can make a huge difference because the thing on the left is water. It's a water molecule. And the thing on the right is a hydrogen peroxide molecule, one of which we need and we can drink and it's just fine. And the other one, if you were to drink, it would uh, it would poison you. Okay, so now compound is a substance made of a bunch of the same molecule. Okay, so elements are made of atoms, compounds are made of molecules. Atoms and molecules are the particles that make up the larger substances. So for example, table salt, NaCl, that is a formula that tells us that it's made of a sodium and a chlorine. And table salt, the substance, is made of a bunch of sodiums and chlorines bonded or stuck to each other. The compound is the substance 
and the molecule is the individual particle within that substance, but they're all identical to each other. So then let's look at a few of the different models that we have um, in order to represent these compounds. The first thing that we're going to see the most common is the chemical formula because it can be typed and it can be written um, and every scientist across the entire world speaks in these chemical formulas. They're all the same no matter what language that you speak. What we do is we take atomic symbols and subscript letters to represent the number and type of atoms in each molecule of a compound. Okay, so we're going to go back to our easy one, our fun friend, the H, the 2, and the O. Notice that that 2 is below. It's very important that it's below. It's a subscript. So the 2 tells us about what is before it, and that tells us we have two hydrogens. Now notice there's nothing after the oxygen. It's an assumed 1, so that means we have 1 oxygen. So the number tells about what is before it. Okay, And this is for each molecule inside of the compound of water. Let's take a look at another one. If we have CO2, now C and O are two different capital letters. They're two different atoms. So we have one carbon, the assumed one, and we have two oxygens. So in order to draw a carbon dioxide molecule, we would need one carbon and two oxygens stuck to each other. Um, let's take a look at something else. We could get a K and a B and an R. Now to slow it down here for a second, each new capital letter is a new atom. Remember, because on the periodic table, we have a capital at the beginning and then lowercase. That's why it was important. So we have one potassium is assumed, right? And then a new capital gives us one bromine. How do we know? Periodic table, friend. And we get KBr, potassium bromide molecule, stuck together. How do I know the naming? How do I know what order they go in? It's okay. We're just looking at understanding how to go from a molecule to a formula, formula to a molecule, okay? There's a couple of different ways that we can represent these chemical formulas then that aren't necessarily written out or typed on a computer. First one's a space filling model. So again, we have our H2O, and it's where our, we have circles around our symbols, and they touch each other. So each circle touches the other circles. Then the ball and stick model, some people like this, and there's, there's pros and cons for both, where the circles um, are around the symbols, but then they're connected with lines to separate the atoms from each other a little bit better. They have the exact same meaning, though. Um, so no matter which one you see, you know that they're both two H's, two hydrogens, and one oxygen stuck to each other. They're representing water molecules. Okay, so let's switch it up again. Here's some more examples, and we're going to use Legos this time. So iron is an atom. It's an element, Fe. So if we have a bunch of these guys here, a bunch of the same Lego, then they are individual, unattached atoms, which means that iron is an element. Okay, it's a bunch of atoms. Now, let's separate the board here, do, 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 and oxygen, O, is also on the periodic table. It has a singular symbol, and to represent the oxygens, each one of those is an individual unattached oxygen atom, so oxygen also is an element, okay? So we have two different elements. Now, if we take these two elements and stick them together, in very specific ratios, I have three oxygens and two irons. One, two, three oxygens stuck to two irons. One, two, three oxygens also stuck to two irons. Okay, so all of the same molecule. Now we have Fe2O3, and that is called rust, friends. So when iron atoms, two iron atoms attach to three oxygens, we get the compound of rust, which is made of Fe2O3 molecules. Um, let's take a look at another ejemplo. So here we have a bunch of unattached individual 
carbon atoms. So we have carbon is a what? Boom shakalaka, that's right, an element. And on the other side of the board, we have a bunch of these little gold kind of conical structures. And they are hydrogens, capital H. They are also individual unattached atoms, which makes them an element. So we have two different elements, elemental carbon, elemental hydrogen. They each have a singular atomic symbol. And in the real world, carbon will also often attach to four hydrogen friends. One, two, three, four to a carbon. One, two, three, four to a carbon. So we have four carbons and one, or sorry, four hydrogens and one carbon. Can you guess what the formula is going to be? This is a substance called methane, a chemical called methane, CH4. Four, one carbon, four hydrogens, is a bunch of the same molecule, a bunch of CH4 molecules. Therefore, it is a compound, molecule, 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 compound of methane, CH4. Okay, um, so there are multiple acceptable models for these chemicals, for these compounds. We can do Legos. We can do the chemical formula of CH4. We can do the circles that are touching each other, the space filling models. And we can also do ball and stick models. They're all completely okay because they show us the type and number of atoms inside of a molecule of a compound. Um, each one gives us a little bit different information, but they're all completely acceptable. So let's play a little game of element or compound. And let's see how you do. Really try and guess. Say the words out loud. It's fun. It's a good time. So here I have SI in a circle, SI in a circle, SI in a circle, SI in a circle. What is it? That's right. If you look at your periodic table, it's going to be silicon SI, which makes it an element because it's a bunch of the same atom. They're not connected to each other. They have the same symbol inside. Therefore, it is an element. It's on the periodic table of elements. Now, if I take these SIs and I connect them using a line to a circle with an O inside of them and then put another O on the other side, what are they? Hmm, they're SiO2s indeed. This is sand and it's a compound because it is a bunch of the same molecule. Fantastic. I hope you're guessing right along with me. I don't mean this to be tricky or painful. It should feel pretty easy to you. Now, here's another thing. A bunch of just single, unattached, individual atoms of Legos. What is it? An element. Yeah, yeah. Good job. We don't know what it is. It could be chlorine. Who knows? But it's used to represent an element. So how about if I take some C's and then I draw some O's touching them. And uh, th these are separate. Sorry, I'm a little boo boo there. What is it? That's right, it's a compound. Very good. How did you know? Because it is a bunch of C's attached to O's. It's carbon monoxide. It's a bunch of carbon monoxide molecules. Therefore, it is a compound. Now, last one. If I just draw a bunch of empty blue circles on the board that are all the same, what is it? You know it. It's an element because it's a bunch of the same atom. You got it. Good job. We can move on now.